All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Hannah Rapley. Hannah is a journalist for the NBC News Investigative Unit. Her work has appeared in Salon, The Mail and Guardian, and The Nation magazine, all of which and more you can find at hrapley.com. You can also follow her on Twitter, at Rapley. Hannah, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Actually, you're on Twitter at H. Rapley. Sorry H. about Rapley, that. Yes. That's H. Rapley, okay. <laughs> That's so, right. and, uh, so Hannah, you actually recently had a really interesting and amazing report for The Nation magazine about a town in Alabama that has what's being compared to a debtor's prison. The story actually begins uh, with you talking about a woman named Deborah Ford. Tell us Deborah's story and what exactly happened to her. Yeah, so this is a story that my reporting partner, Lisa, and I worked on for about a year, and it takes place in a county outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, Deborah Ford was a, or is a, uh, older woman, um, who lives in Harpersville, Alabama, in Shelby County. Um, she's low income, um, and I think she, she's unemployed. Um, but about, January 2007, um, she was driving without a license um, after running some errands in Harpersville, and she got pulled over. Um, And that day, she got tickets for driving without a license and um, driving without insurance. Um, When she went to court to pay those tickets and to fight those tickets, um, she was fined, I think, about $800 plus court costs. And in Harpersville... Um, As it is in a lot of other southern states and states in the West, um, if you show up to court um, and you can't pay your fines right away, you could get put on probation with a private company. And under that system, when you get put on probation, um, you it's basically a way for you to pay out your court costs and your fees over time. And these private companies sort of act as debt collectors for courts. So she got put on probation with a company called Judicial Correction Services. And basically what happened to her um, is that each month she would have to pay upwards of $45 a month to the private company um, in addition to paying down whatever she could um, from her original Um, um, Is that because she's a low-income person, she struggled for a long time to pay down those fees to the company and to the court. And when she stopped paying, um, she told us that she tried pretty hard and eventually she just wasn't able to. Um, The company asked the court of Harpersville, this really small municipal court, to um, put out a warrant for her arrest for not paying her her fees company into the court. Um, She was picked up and put in jail. And what happened to her is, And it happened, uh, what we found to a lot of people in Harpersville and in Shelby County, um, she basically ended up in jail for months. And then she got put in a for-profit work release program um, indefinitely. And each day that she spent in jail and in that work release program, her fees basically just kept going up and up and up um, to the point where uh, her original charge was like I said, $800. Um, She eventually ended up owing thousands of dollars to the city of Parkersville and to JCS. um, And she basically had no way out by the time we got, we got to her. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, So let's dig into the, uh, the private probation company, Mm -hmm. JCS. Um, Tell us about its history, where it came from, and and, and just sort of how this came to be, because it it, it does, again, one of the things that's that's sort of frustrating is like, you you think in, whenever you tie profit into uh, the detention system in the United States and like putting people behind bars, when you add a profit motive, it gets really, really dangerous in my opinion. So talk a little bit about JCS and where they came from in their history. Yeah, and that and that point of um, you know introducing profit motive into criminal justice, we should definitely sort of try to unpack that later. But so so probation is traditionally considered um, a way to rehabilitate people and also for courts uh, to supervise offenders instead of putting them in jail. Um, it's considered to be cheaper and, like I said, more of a way to rehabilitate somebody, you know, rather than just locking them up. 
that's the way that we traditionally look at probation. Um, and probation is often used in low level cases like misdemeanors. Um, but back in, I think it was around the seventies, um, the first sort of organization that started using the private for-profit probation model was, um, Salvation Army in Florida. Um, and like I explained in Deborah Ford's case, an offender, misdemeanor, low level offender who's put on probation has to pay upwards of, you know, $35 a month to $45 to the company in addition to the fees and fines that they owe for their original offense. Um, so, you know, before the 90s, it was sort of the Salvation Army um, and then Tennessee. And I think Missouri were some of the first two states to pass laws authorizing for-profit companies to run probation services. But the practice has really taken hold in southern states like Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. Um, Georgia, in particular, I think there's upwards of 300,000 people who are a day who are supervised by private probation companies in the state. Um, that's, that's kind of like ground zero for the, for the industry. Um, I'm, I can't remember exactly how many companies practice there, but it's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's interesting because in Georgia, there's, there's more of a oversight structure, but the industry has also uh, succeeded in getting you know, in winning a lot of concessions in terms of um, there is a bill, sorry, this is sort of like going into the weeds, but um, a bill was just pa- just passed both houses in the state um, that would allow private probation companies from, or it would allow, would, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, bar offenders from looking up uh, certain like records related to their cases. It would make the industry a lot less transparent uh, less sub- subject to less oversight. Um, so the industry is very, very strong there. Um, and, you know, it's spread sort of from the South to the West. Um, there, it, there are companies in Idaho and Colorado and Oklahoma, I believe, um, and California as well. And these companies not only run um, traditional probation services, they also run um, GPS monitoring. One of the most profitable companies and Sentinel Offender Services, they're based in California. They run things like uh, GPS monitoring. A lot of companies run courses that uh, probationers often are sentenced to by judges, such as like anger management courses, domestic violence courses, and probationers also have to pay fees for those courses as well as well as fees for their GPS monitoring. Um, and it's, it's a really profitable industry. Um, Companies like JCS, um, JCS was founded um, by local uh, people people in Georgia. Um, they had a background in law enforcement and the financial industry. Um, JCS in a large court can net million, like over a million dollars um, in one, you know, sort of relatively large court. So it's it's very profitable. 